Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of RGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're looking at the 12th topic of the syllabus, respiration. So as always, I want you to pause the video and have a quick read through this. And as soon as you're ready, you can restart the video and continue on. So what is respiration? Well, respiration is broadly defined as a chemical reaction in cells that break down nutrients to release energy. Now, if this is done using oxygen, we call that aerobic respiration. And if it's done without using oxygen, we call that anaerobic respiration. And it's important for you to understand that uh, the presence of enzymes are absolutely necessary in order for these reactions to occur. Now, the energy that is used, uh, so the energy that is derived from this process called respiration is used for things like muscle contraction, protein synthesis, cell division, active transport, growth, uh, the passage of nerve impulses, and the maintenance of a constant body temperature as a part of homeostasis. Okay, so these are a couple of stuff that Cambridge wants you to kind of be able to list if they ever ask you any question about what the energy derived from respiration is useful. Cool. So moving on, we're looking at aerobic respiration now. Uh, it's defined as chemical reactions in cells that use oxygen to break down nutrient molecules to release energy. We've looked at this uh, word equation and the chemical reaction before in our previous video, and it's important for you to be able to replicate this in an exam. So by using glucose uh, with oxygen, we get water, carbon dioxide, and energy. Now, there are certain investigations that we can kind of put in place in order to study this chemical reaction. For example, uh, we can investigate the uptake of oxygen by respiring organisms. <coughs> Excuse me. So, take a look at this diagram here, which is the diagram of a basic simple respirometer. So, you've got a test tube here, or in any type of tube really, where you've got a specimen chamber, some place that you can uh, put in the organisms that you are concerned with or the, the organisms that you are kind of using in order to uh, investigate this. And you've got soda lime at the bottom. Now soda lime is important because it, it absorbs carbon dioxide. Um, and so you've got this cork up here at the top to block off uh, the air from the outside, but it's connected through a tube that goes down the middle and into um, a colored liquid which is inside another um, compartment. And so basically what we are kind of attempting to do here is you've got the soda lime which absorbs all the carbon dioxide that is produced by respiration um, by the organisms that you've placed in this specimen chamber. It can be germinating seeds, it can be maggots, whatever you do. And so basically, uh, what we expect to find is that because these organisms use the oxygen inside this air, that's within the tube and inside this uh, compartment here, you expect the colored liquid to go up towards um, this kind of uh, tube here. So you expect the star to move up because the air inside it is being used up by these organisms. Or, sorry, the oxygen inside the air within this tube and inside this compartment is being used up uh, in the process of respiration. And because carbon dioxide is also a gas that is released by the uh, organisms as a part of respiration, so the lime here uh, attempts to kind of eliminate that from, the, uh, from kind of affecting the rate that this liquid goes up. So if you were to calculate how fast this liquid goes up through the tube, then you have a measure of the rate of uh, oxygen intake by the uh, whatever specimen you have, and that essentially equates to the rate of respiration. Okay, so that, that's also a measure that you can uh, kind of formulate. And this water bath here is to control the temperature. So it keeps a constant temperature around these specimen and the whole system here because temperature plays a role in changing the rate of respiration. The higher the temperature, generally the higher the rate of respiration and vice versa. Um, 
So using this water bath, you can actually investigate how the rate of respiration is affected by the temperature. So all you need to do is vary the temperature of the water bath and measure the rate of respiration at each of those different temperatures and then you can find out, you know, through a graph or whatnot, how the rate of respiration is changed by the uh, varying amounts of temperature. So you'll essentially find that uh, as you increase the temperature, the rate of respiration should increase unless you get to a degree where you're just denaturing the enzymes, which uh, you should know in your previous topics. Okay, what denaturing is and how, how, how it works. Okay, so now when you do this experiment, another important thing is that you should have a control measure or a control system where you do everything except uh, everything the same except you should change this, uh, the soda line to glass beads or something along the lines of that. Um, now that's because the soda lime is good for absorbing CO2 which is necessary because during respiration CO2 is released um, as a part of the chemical reaction and this soda lime aims to kind of eliminate that uh, from the system so the increase in rate is meant to be just from the pure intake of oxygen that uh, the organisms are using. But there's a slight problem because the soda line can actually absorb the CO2 that was originally in the air, not just the CO2 that is released by the organisms. So that can play a role in increasing the uh, the height of this fluid, as well as as well as the oxygen that is decreasing because of respiration. So yeah, you need a control measure and then see what happens uh, when you actually don't have the soda line, but actually replace it with glass beads and see how much the uh, the dyed liquid goes up, and then you have some sort of comparison, and you can see how this kind of affects the whole system. Okay, um, but yeah, so that's that's those are just some basic uh, attempts to investigate respiration, and that's pretty much the only amount that you really need to know for your course. You don't need to go into too much depth. I don't think, but yeah, that's a very simple um, way of uh, kind of investigating it. Now, when we take a look at anaerobic respiration, it's defined as chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrient molecules to release energy, but importantly, without the use of oxygen. Now, generally, if oxygen is available, organisms will undergo aerobic respiration. Now, this is because in most cases, anaerobic respiration is actually less efficient than aerobic respiration. Now, when we talk about efficiency, we're talking about the fact that anaerobic respiration produces less energy per molecule of glu uh, glucose than aerobic respiration. Uh, that's why we say it's less efficient, because you just don't get as much energy out of it. In humans, this is the equation for anaerobic respiration, and in yeast, this is the equation here, where you get glucose giving you alcohol and carbon dioxide. And unfortunately, yes, you do need to know and be able to replicate these uh, equations inside of an exam. Um, so we're mainly concerned with what uh, the, the human reaction here, okay, Wh which produces lactic acid, which is, uh, is a more poisonous byproduct or waste product than carbon dioxide. And so when we think about when anaerobic respiration occurs, it normally occurs during vigorous exercise that the demand for oxygen is actually higher than the amount that can be given to the cells. So therefore, there's a temporary shortage, uh, shortage of oxygen, and anaerobic respiration seems to be the only way that we can derive energy uh, under those circumstances, because the oxygen is simply not there. And as we take a look at this equation here, as we anaerobic res respire, we accumulate something called lactic acid. Now, the only way we can remove lactic acid, which we have to do because it's poisonous, is by aerobic respiration. What does that mean? That means we need oxygen to remove the lactic acid that we just built up by anaerobically respiring. Okay? And in this situation, we have something called an oxygen debt because we've borrowed oxygen that wasn't actually there uh, in order to respire anaerobically and because we've 
accumulated lactic acid uh, we kind of need to repay the debt now um, and as soon as we do get the oxygen we need to use it to break down the lactic acid that was originally present as we anaerobically respired um, so essentially after we finish with the vigorous exercise our heart rate continues to beat fast for a while and our depth of breathing also continues to be quite deep for a while after that your heart just doesn't doesn't suddenly return normal does it now this continuation of a fast heart rate allows lactic acid to be transported really quickly from our muscles to the liver which is where it's removed using the oxygen that we get and deep breathing uh, allows the oxygen in the air to be sufficiently kind of um, entered in our bodies in sufficient quantities as well for aerobic respiration to happen which is used to remove the lactic acid um, that is poisonous to our bodies cool so once again thank you for watching and i hope that made a lot of sense and if it didn't make sure to comment below and i'll try to answer your questions as fast and um, in depth as i can Cool, so uh, study hard and thank you for watching.